everyone, my wife loves hexagons, and I want to see if I could create some simple wall art designs so she can hang it up and enjoy it every time she walks in a room. Let's do this. To build this project, I'm primarily going to be using a miter saw to make most of these cuts because we need a bunch of symmetrical 30 degree cuts. If you don't have a miter saw, it might be possible to cut it by hand, but it will be a lot harder. First up, let's grab some good wood to work with. Now, in this case, this is a 1x2 furring strip, and if by chance you are limited on tools, this is the wood to go with. Just keep an eye out for the ones that have very little knots and ones that are nice and straight, because in most cases, they're twisted and warped and just look really, really bad. So make sure you find the unicorns in the bunch. Now, if by chance you have a table saw, there is another way to make your strips of wood. And by making your own strips, you can sometimes have much much nicer wood. Now in this case I have a 2x4 and a 2x6. This 2x6 only has one knot right here in the center so you could rip down a bunch of strips and get a ton of nice wood and possibly save a little bit of money. You could also do the same with 2x4s but you'll have to avoid a lot of knots sometimes. You'll just have to look through the bunch and find the best wood if you're going to use a 2x4. So I'd suggest grabbing a 2x6. You could possibly get a lot better wood out of it. And of course we don't have to have full 8 foot long pieces to do this. If you by chance have a bunch of scrap left over from previous projects, we can rip them down and use that wood as well. For example, this one board here, I could get multiple hexagons out of. For my first cut, I'm actually going to trim off about an eighth of an inch off of the side of this board, because this board could be a little bit uneven going down the side. And once I make that cut, then I can flip it over, knowing that I have a nice straight edge, that I can use it against the fence to make all those cuts. Then I'm gonna set the table saw fence to three quarters of an inch, or 19 millimeters, to rip out the strips. Now whether you purchase furring strips or you made your own, it's now time to set up their miter saw and it'll be the same for either way. First off we want to move our miter saw over to the 30 degree mark and lock it down. Then you should probably make a test cut on some scrap wood because if this is not set at exactly 30 degrees, you'll have a bunch of gaps in your hexagons. Next, we need to set up a stop block to make these cuts a little bit faster and a little bit easier. But first, we need to make sure that it is 90 degrees on the side that'll touch of the fence and the side that'll touch our project so it doesn't throw anything off. I want the outside of the hexagons to be about six inches, so from the stop block to where the blade comes down is about six inches. Now it's time to make our first cut, and I'm gonna line up our board against the fence, and we wanna cut our first 30 degree angle. Now in this case, it already has an angle on it, but this is inaccurate, so I'm gonna cut that off. Then we're going to take our wood, flip it 180 degrees, and then slide it over and gently rest it against our stop block to make our second cut. And I'm just going to repeat that process until we run out of wood. I ended up with 30 pieces from that scrap piece of 2x6. So in other words, you can get a lot of these sides from just a little bit of lumber. I've taken six of the pieces and I've lined them up end to end. And as you can tell, there's very minimal, if any, gap in between them. If by chance your miter saw is not set up correctly, you'll see some large gaps in these areas. If by chance you do have some gaps on the ends, you could always take a little bit of your sawdust and some glue and kind of mix it in together in those cracks and then sand it down and it should remove most of those gaps. Or you can try something like I'm about to do is stain every other one. So let's see how that turns out. But before we glue it or stain it, it's a good idea to take a little bit of sandpaper and to gently go over all the edges, not the ends, but just the inside and outside edges. And that'll remove some of those splinters and any rough surfaces. To give this a little color, I'm gonna use a dark walnut stain. And once it's all stained, we can slide it back together. And the great thing about having different colors you can't tell if there's any cracks or any separations between the two. For example, there's a little gap here, but you can't tell that because the different colors kind of camouflages everything. And of course, if you plan on staining all the pieces when you put them together, the darker stains will hide some of those cracks as well. Just make sure they're not very big, otherwise they still will be noticeable. And now it's time to glue this together. You can use some regular wood glue or you can use some CA glue. The wood glue will definitely be stronger, but it'll also take a lot longer to dry and you'll have to clamp it together. Versus CA glue and some accelerator will be a lot faster, but it'll also be a little bit more brittle. I just plan to hang these hexagons up on the wall, so I'm just gonna use some CA glue to make it fast. Using a CA glue is pretty simple. We're just going to apply some glue on this one end. I'm just choosing the side that has the stain on it, just because I think it'd probably be a little bit easier. Give that just a few seconds. And then we're gonna take some accelerator and put it on the other one. Then we're gonna use my thumb here to kind of brace everything together as we push it together. And of course, give it a few seconds holding it there in place before you let go. 
and that should allow the CA accelerator to hold everything together. Let's check it out. There you go. Also, I'd suggest using your accelerator on the sides of the wood that is not stained because on occasion, if your stain is not fully cured, then it could possibly discolor it. And there we have it, our hexagon is finished. Now, of course, you could always go back and on the back side add some brackets or maybe some staples if you don't feel the glue is holding well enough. That's completely up to you. But otherwise, it is done. Of course, you may need to have a hanger, depending on if you're going to hang them on the wall or if you're just going to display them. That's totally up to you. Now, I have to go and make a bunch more of these so I can make the wife happy. I ended up making a total of six of these. Now, the great thing about this design is you can attach the different sides together and make a bunch of different designs, especially if you have six or more. So I got on my computer and I printed off a couple of different pages of several different designs for you to just kind of get an idea of what you can do with this. Let me show you these. All of these designs use only six of these hexagons, but you can obviously make more or less and come up with whatever design you would like. If you have any other suggestions of what we can do with these hexagons, maybe it's more designs, maybe it's something completely different, please list that in the comments. I'd love to hear about it and I'm sure you can help out a lot of other people. Now, if you enjoyed this project, get out in your shop and have fun building.